focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. Hello and welcome to the Dubik Symposium 2015-16 presented by Tata Docomo Business Services and powered by CNBC TV18. Now through the series we've traversed the length and breadth of the country to meet with industry stalwarts to discuss digital disruption in India. And on this very special action-packed episode we're traveling to our final set of cities Mumbai, Hyderabad and Chennai on a quest to find out about the digital challenges and opportunities in India. In Mumbai, it was Dr. Gopichan Katagara, Group Chief Technology Officer and Innovation Head at Tata Sons, who inaugurated the event with an inspiring address. Dr. Katagara drives technology and innovation across the Tata conglomerate, leveraging cross-company synergies. So I'm going to talk about digital disruption, yes. That is the theme of today's conference, but I'll also talk about it in a context. So I had the opportunity in the past few months to go around the world and see what's happening and thought I would share it uh, with you. What's exciting, uh, some of it is digital, uh, some of it is partly digital, but rest assured there is digital everywhere. So soft robotics is interesting. So without having any actuators, you can actually cause movements which cause whatever you want. You can pick, you can move, and you can do various uh, actions. Bio-inspired robotics, very interesting. These dragonflies are flying around. And uh, they can carry a camera, they can carry a listening device. So you'll see a lot of focus around biology, gene editing I mentioned already, deep learning. We in India have the uh, yield of our agricultural lands at the bottom most. As in, we, we, our yields are really needing improvement. So we're looking at how to reduce fertilizer, how to reduce pesticide, how to reduce water and still improve the yield. And significant amount of this is digital in nature. Digital factories and fleets, how to improve the yield of our factories, how to connect our fleets for efficiencies. Digital consumer products and uh, services. So for the digital consumer, what uh, can we do? So these are areas where we are bringing multiple Tata Group companies together and uh, really exciting uh, stuff uh, that we are working on. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for <laughs> Gopi. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. On the panel at the Mumbai Symposium were Amira Shah, MD and CEO Metropolis Healthcare, Rachna Nath, Partner and Head Digital Advisory KPMG India, Umesh Revankar, MD Sriram Transport Finance, and N. Srinath, Managing Director Tata Tele Services Limited. Amira, first question to you. You know, the first generation at times is very averse to adopting technology. The young, the young generation is more. Uh, you should be more familiar with technology, more open to it. How's, how's that been at your business? Ours is traditionally a pretty stodgy industry. It's been very old-fashioned. It's worked in certain protocols. And the ecosystem is actually made up of, you know, doctors who don't necessarily, uh, are not used to changing technologies and are not necessarily very interested in changing habits. So the industry hasn't really moved in a digitized format as yet because people are working in certain ways and the gatekeepers are the doctors. Um, so I think we're going to still take some time to move in that direction. But the, the opportunity at hand is fantastic. What is your uh, outlook about getting more people on the mobile internet bandwagon? If you typically look at adoption, I mean the rate of adoption is like really, really fast. And you know, basically the time it took for let's say a million people to get on board onto a mobile, I think uh, the next million is much, uh, you know, faster out here. Personal use, as far as mobility is concerned, is uh, something which will really, really go up. I think on the other side, it is largely more about technology adoption, uh, you know, and who's going to make the first move. So you would always have uh, leaders out there. But I suppose personal, we will see it happening much faster. Mr. Sinat, your thoughts on this with the, with, to get more people on, on, on the internet, what's, what's happening in that space? How do we... I, I think we're kind of at a perfect storm where um, on one side, the number of use cases for um, high-speed capacity or high-speed bandwidth available ubiquitously 
the number of applications is increasing and I don't think we've even scratched the surface of what the potential is for that technology. World over, governments have recognized the importance of connectivity as an ability to provide social change and drive social change. Countries like India, I think the opportunity is tremendous and a lot of the actions that the government are taking are really to drive that impetus and keep the availability of high-speed capacity to users more and more uh, across the country. Umesh Devankar, I want to get you in on this. Uh, when you're with Sri Ram Transport Finance and your customers, your clients are not always the guys that are in the top four metros of the country. They are very often the people that are in smaller towns, tier two, tier three towns. How is technology helping your company there reach out to make it easier to reach out to those customers and to provide them with a better service, with a better product there? The utility of uh, uh, mobile phone came to them more of a communication need, uh, not do anything else. Uh, but as I understood that nearly 70% of our customers are having mobile, first thing I wanted to make a change in the way we uh, give a receipt to them. There was a huge opposition from within the team and the, from the customer both. But the customer uh, protest was not there actually. It is done by our own people. Then I said, we'll just give SMS and let us understand. Then they wanted the book, receipt book also to be carried. I said, no receipt book. I, I withdrew all the receipt book from the people. Then we just went through that. And within six months, I was able to see that customer is able to adopt. And today for our field force, who are 10,000 in numbers, we are giving a smartphone to them so that they are on par with like, I need not give the laptop to them so that they are more efficient. Okay. Well, thank you so much on that note. Thank you so much to the panel for being here. Um, a round of applause for our panel, please. On that note, it's time for a short break. On the other side, the highlights from the Hyderabad Symposium. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dubik Symposium 2015-16 presented by Tata Docomo Business Services and powered by CNBC TV 18. Now from Mumbai, we travel to the city that's fast emerging as the tech hub in India, Hyderabad. Pratik Pashine, President Enterprises of Tata Tele Services, kick-started the event with Tata Tele Services' view on digital disruption, the CEO's agenda. Good evening, everyone. We have been doing the Dubik Symposium for over seven years and this is an endeavor from our side to get uh, key decision makers, CEOs, owners, CTOs, uh, CXOs onto a common platform and select a topic that's relevant, that's topical, that's a discussion in the uh, various organizations and hopefully give an opportunity for everyone to hear what fellow colleagues, fellow industry uh, 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 industries are working on or what are their concerns, how are they solving these problems. And every year we keep uh, selecting topic which is uh, relevant. Uh, we believe that digital is engulfing. Digital is uh, uh, becoming part of every industry, be it in healthcare or logistics, financial services or, or, or travel and uh, tourism. As Tata Docomo or Tata Tele Services, we have products that enable companies like uh, you to kind of leverage the digital technologies to truly uh, bring, uh, bring it to bear and deliver a tangible outcome to your sales teams, to your customers, to your employees, and to your uh, uh, supply chain partners. So with that, uh, uh, wish you the very best for 2016 and for the years to come. Thank you. On the panel at the Hyderabad Symposium were Vivi Gardgil, Chief Executive and Managing Director, l and Metro Rail Hyderabad. Dhruv Agarwal, Executive Vice President, Gati. Subhas Pramanik, MD GOCL Corporation Limited. And Pratik Pashine, President Enterprise, Tata Tele Services Limited. Uh, Mr. Gardgil, I want to start with you. So how are you in, uh, involving, integrating all these new digital or technology things in the metro to kind of keep up with the times? India is approaching to a maximize or maximum urbanization very quickly. Yeah. We are yeah. going to have a lot of people moving from the villages or the small places to the urban areas. And mass rapid transit is going to be one of the significant requirement of the day. Now today, prediction of these structures, the materials, is very sound because of these digital technologies what we are using. Mm. The more positive side what I am looking at is technology 
for making the systems more safer, more efficient, more compact, and more energy efficient also. You know, Dhruv, I want to come to you on this point. Logistics is somewhere where definitely maybe IoT can greatly help you, you know, keeping a track on your trucks, keeping a track on the packages that you're delivering. Are you uh, already implementing that? Are you seeing a difference happening uh, because of this? IoT is, uh, uh, is definitely going to be a big plus for us. Um, people have already started implementing IoT in trucks. All of our uh, pickups and deliveries are done off of tablets. I think technology is great. But getting people to adopt it sometimes yeah. is is uh, is a big is it, challenge. Is a concern you you believe internally getting it adopted might be a concern. I think now it's becoming like easier. <clears throat> now, like two years back, it wasn't like tablets and smartphones yeah. were not so prevalent, so people were not comfortable. Or you know, okay. but now they now they're getting more comfortable. You know. Okay. So, Anna Pratik, what is um, your opinion? I mean, your what are you experiencing while talking to customers? Is is customer adoption one of their big concerns? Or uh, what, what, what are, what's the feedback you're getting? The digital is changing the way we talk to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier, it was okay to talk to the admin or the IT team mm -hmm. because that's what the power of telecom and IT uh, was uh, to deliver connectivity. It is changing uh, in the sense that we today no longer have one customer in a customer organization. We've got five, seven different customers. You have a sales side as a customer. You have a... Uh, and the dialogue is becoming very different. Earlier, it was okay to talk of bits and bytes uh, and reliability, and you could get an order. Today, you have to talk in customer language. And I think that itself uh, is making people ad uh, adopt technologies faster and quicker. Mr. Pramanik at uh, GOCL Corporation, how is technology, in a way, helping communicate? But also, there are some challenges you were, we were talking earlier. So if you could shed some light on those. One of the biggest problems that we see is uh, in the metros, B-class cities, we don't have much problem. But most of our operations are basically in the rural blocks or even in mining blocks, where even the rural uh, communication systems do not work. And uh, frankly, today we've got video conferencing where we try to link up all our locations and have a discussion. Slowly things have improved, but I wish things go faster. Thank you so much to the panelists. Thank you so much for being here. The special guest for the evening was an inspiring lady who's left an extensive mark on the healthcare sector, the Joint Managing Director of Apollo Hospitals, Sangeeta Reddy. Since the year 2000, 52% of Fortune 500 companies have either gone bankrupt, been acquired, or ceased to exist. 52% of Fortune 500 companies. The answer is very, very simple. They didn't figure out the digital tsunami which was upon us. Coming from a healthcare company, I shouldn't start off with saying that companies are dying. But I think uh, the fact that if we do not change and figure out what's upon us, there is very little that we can do. But the good news about this scenario is in this internet-enabled world, the technology, the devices, the hardware, the mindset is moving so fast. With that kind of speed of adoption of the consumer, um, with the growth of the entire IoT space, I think Gartner said that the number from about $1.6 uh, trillion is going to become like $9 trillion by the year 2020. IoT is moving fast, adoption is moving super fast, and the ability to put your ecosystem into this new world is also becoming easier and cheaper. And therefore, the only thing that's really left is for us to jump onto the bandwagon, have the right adoption mindset that is going to make this one of the best things that we're looking at to do. I hope you have a wonderful career, an outstanding journey. Your digital journey is outstanding, and also have a wonderful evening. Thank you all very much for this opportunity. On that note, it's time for a short break. On the other side, the finale of the Dubit Symposium events from Chennai. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the Dubik Symposium 2015-16 presented by Tata Docomo Business Services and powered by CNBC TV 18. Now to conclude the nationwide on-ground symposiums on a high note, we travel to Chennai. With a thought-provoking speech, Mr. Vinod Dasri, the MD of Ashok Leyland, launched the series finale in Chennai. Good evening ladies and gentlemen. I consider it a privilege to be speaking to such an august gathering on a subject on which I can remotely be considered an expert. I'm not from the IT industry and not anywhere close to it. I run a truck and bus company where hardware is steel forgings and castings and software is probably the seats that you sit on in a bus. In any case, with that being a disclaimer, let me give you my brief views on the subject of digital disruption and what would a CEO of an automobile company do with it. The way we see it, it took us 30 years to connect the first 2 billion people onto the internet and it will take less than 7 years to connect the next 2 billion. 4 billion people will be connected by 2020. Consumers will anticipate newer and better products at a much faster rate. By the time you figured out all the software on your iPhone 6, I'm sure there will be an iPhone 7. Increased competition will be evident as digital disruption will accelerate competing ideas. It will lower the barriers to entry and facilitate entry of number of new players which are aided by alternate technologies also. The third major change that I see is personalization of interactions. Digital disruption, as they say, is a bit overwhelming and largely unpredictable to me. But I feel it has significant potential to enhance the customer experience and thereby drive substantial business value. As a business leader, we have to start thinking strategically and think how we can leverage this for our business for the future. Thank you very much. On the panel at the Chennai Symposium were Satya Prabhakar, CEO Sulekha.com Velayan Subaya, MD Chola Mandalam Investment and Finance Company Sunil Subramaniam, CEO Sundram Mutual Fund and Pratik Pashine, President Enterprise Tata Tele Services Limited I will start with uh, Satya. How have you as a company worked and kept keep, keep on adopting, keep on changing and adapting and modifying yourself through this tough time? When you look at especially the whole digital and mobile ecosystem, roughly about 80% of uh, ventures actually fail. They, right. they fail to return money back to investors. And about uh, 10%, you know, just break even and the other 10% succeed. And even that, uh, the path to success is a long haul. There is no one strategy or an approach to succeed. And it depends a lot on the competition and the emerging ecosystem and the uh, availability of funding. And in the re recent past, in the last uh, three years, there is such tsunami of easy money that has come into the industry that poses a huge challenges also for companies. So the way we have done is to understand uh, what is actually makes people want, need to come to Suleka. And uh, we, have, uh, we have fashioned ourselves as a marketplace for local services, which is a huge market of about $200 billion. With, with Chola Mandalam also, you've recently acquired a payment bank license. And that payment bank is coming and changing this full, the financial services space. I want your thoughts on that full space. You know, so I think the world of financial technology is actually much riper, you know, for disruption than most other sectors just because, you know, our business is money. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, most of the time we don't deal with tangible manufactured goods. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a lot easier to disrupt. So when you get into what kinds of disruptions are happening in our business, primarily we're seeing, you know, disruptions in the area of payments and disruptions in the area of lending. Uh, and I think what the RBI has done with payments banks is, uh, is just brilliant. Uh, and this year is, re I mean, really when I think we're going to see a lot of that change come in place, right? Okay. So it's uh, going to be exciting year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Subramanian, I want to get you in on this point also, being in the mutual fund industry, specifically from that angle, about this digital disruption wave that's going about. This is a huge social you know, what do you call disparity mm -hmm. in terms of all these people and the new generation not going to take care of the parents, mm -hmm. they're facing, we don't have a pension program, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And so usage of mutual funds is absolutely critical mm -hmm. as a, you know, a well managed, scientifically managed. So, so you the think problem we like a like a like a colonic cleanse, like a detox and change our our, our saving uh, structure, our investment structure. Correct. And so why hasn't this happened? 
This hasn't happened for three reasons. Okay, one, bank deposits are guaranteed by the government of India. The second thing is complication. So this industry is just ripe for digital disruption by simply simplification is of the both key. the process and the understanding. And Pratik, uh, uh, Mr. Subramanian touched on this very important point which he said simplification, make it ease of doing business or just basically making things simple. Uh, at Tata Tele Services, when you are interacting with clients and customers, uh, how is that coming about? More than simple, I would say uh, uh, proximity, mm -hmm. uh, closeness to customer, uh, mm -hmm. closeness to my employee. Mm -hmm. That's, I, I think, we are probably making it a little complex in the background, yeah. but what we are truly doing is to say I am making it simple or getting closer to the customer, he is able to talk to me, he is able to communicate to me or I am able to talk to my employees. People are naturally gravitating towards uh, uh, saying I, I need to adopt digital, it is imperative, uh, but it is about saying how do I get efficiencies one on one hand and getting closer to the customer on the other. Well, it has been a very enlightening evening. Thank you so much gentlemen for being on the panel with me. Thank you so much. Well, that brings us to the end of this segment of the Dubik Symposium 2015-16 presented by Tata Docomo Business Services and powered by CNBC TV18. But stay tuned because the series continues with some fantastic in-depth case studies of companies that have experienced digital disruption firsthand and are paving the way ahead in their industries. Until then, from the entire team, many thanks for watching. Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable.